All right, good morning, everybody. Happy holidays. This is the Fantasy Sports Boss. Welcome to the Fantasy Sports Boss podcast. Um, Want to do a podcast this morning because uh, obviously everybody's probably busy with their families, so uh, no need to do the live stream. But I did want to talk about what happened yesterday and go through all the games. Um, again, happy holidays. Hope you guys have a great day today. Hit that subscribe button. So fantasy football semifinals. Hope you guys did well yesterday. It was a crazy day. I spoke about it early yesterday about how a lot of the prime players just did nothing. And that even goes back to um, the day prior with Stefan Diggs and, and, and some of those low lights. Uh, defenses across fantasy football absolutely got torched that you wouldn't think would. Like, you know, starting with the Cincinnati Bengals, who, which I started, the Green Bay Packers against the Carolina Panthers. Um, and then you had just some sick performances, like from Amari Cooper, Baker Mayfield again. Um, and then, of course, Brees Hall, who I, I had the unfortunate uh, luck of facing in my work league. So as far as myself is concerned, my friends and family league, I have a 64% chance to win. Um, I did put Ezekiel Elliott in there uh, for Javante Williams. That worked out uh, really well. Uh, but the, on the flip side, I, I benched James Conner for uh, Jake Ferguson. That did not work out, but I still have Lamar Jackson to go uh, and Isaiah Pacheco. My opponent has Chiefs defense, Travis Kelsey, and um, Debo Samuel. So he's got some prime uh, guys to go. I have a 17, almost an 18-point lead, so we'll see what happens there. Uh, and then in my work league, I have a 40% chance to win. I only have A.J. Brown left, and he's got a whole bunch of guys. So um, just really frustrating. That that work league is the league I dominated all season. I had number one seed. Um, you know, I, I was destroying people all year, and I run into a buzzsaw team that drafted Brock Purdy with, um, you know, Mr. Irrelevant pick, literally the last pick of our draft. Just got Justin Jefferson back. Um you know, it's, it, but that's, that's what happens, right? Them's the breaks. Um, you could have the best team by a mile and then you run into a, uh, a hot team in the end. I, you know, I think the only way to solve this, cause it is frustrating and that you could just say, Oh, it's sour crepes, fantasy sports boss, get over it. Um, which is fine. Like I get it. Um, the only other solution to that is if you, lessen the amount of playoff participants in your league and then you go to two week semifinals and two week finals which you know even me just saying it right now i think that's stupid you know a two-week final is one thing you know i think that's that's feasible um because again if you're in the final and one of your guys gets hurt um you know that's that's brutal and then you could lose a championship just from a, a guy getting hurt and the ironic thing is um in my friends and family league my opponent had jordan addison who got hurt um so i did benefit from that um, but you know, it's still far from a given. I'm going to win, uh, that, that matchup. Um, all right. So let's just go through this, um, really quick. We'll start with the Atlanta Falcons knocking off the Indianapolis Colts. And again, there's just some crazy, crazy games yesterday. Atlanta j putting up 29 points under Arthur Smith is like a minor miracle, but they went back to Taylor Heineke and, you know, he was efficient. He threw a touchdown pass, not great. Um, I did say that they were going to go more heavily on Bijan Robinson, Arthur Smith, knowing that he got basically destroyed in the media. And, you know, even though he's an idiot, um, he had to know he's got to use Bijan Robinson more. And he did. So he did exactly what I said he was going to do. 12 carries for 72 yards. He was electric, eight, uh, six per carry, seven catches for 50 yards. So he did it all. So Bijan Robinson balled out during the fantasy football semifinals. Kyle Pitts, three catches for 49 yards. Unfortunately, Drake London, it's just a lost season for him. Three catches for 39 yards. But again, if Arthur Smith gets fired, I'm going to be back in on all of these guys next year. For the Colts, Gardner Minshew was bad. Um through an interception, just nothing happening here. You know, I said to Fade Jonathan Taylor, if you could, because I don't like starting guys coming off a long layup, and he wasn't good. Uh, 18 for 43, he fell into a, a touchdown, a one-yard touchdown. So um, 2.4 per carry, uh, just not an impressive performance there, but he did get the touchdown. And honestly, that really is all that happened here. Josh Downs didn't step up, six catches for 49 yards, um, for 39 yards, rather. No Michael Pittman with that concussion, so that was a major loss there. Uh, Seattle, 20-17 to over the Tennessee Titans. Um, late comeback victory there, and, and um, Geno Smith was throwing the ball all over the place, you know, uh, in the second half. 
uh, this game to try to catch up. He did throw two touchdown passes. Geno Smith's been solid uh, through the injuries the second half of the year. Uh, Tyler Lockett, 8 for 81. So Tyler Lockett's getting, a, he got 11 targets in this game. He's getting a lot of targets. He's just not getting the raw receptions, at least until yesterday. Uh, his streak of eight touchdowns per season in the last five years is probably going to come to an end. Uh, DK Metcalf, four for 56. You know, you know, when it comes to fantasy wide receivers, you want more than 15 points. That's that's usually in a PPR league. That's my benchmark. So DK Metcalf did not get there. Um, running backs, you want to be like 18 plus, in my opinion, in a PPR league. And quarterbacks, you want to be 25 plus, um, you know, or, or 22 plus in a, in a PPR league. Um, so uh, Kenneth Walker, 16 for 54. You know, he's he's... He's just boring, Kenneth Walker. He, you know, he ha he'll sprinkle in some big games, but just, you know, I'm not going to be back on him next year. Um, just not interested. Derrick Henry, 19 for 88, scored a touchdown. He threw a touchdown. So if you had the unfortunate luck of going against uh, Derrick Henry, you're probably wondering to yourself, you know, he's been pretty awful the last month of the season, but he came back and had a good one here. DeAndre Hopkins, no show, two for 20. And it, we knew this was going to happen. I said bench DeAndre Hopkins because Ryan Tannehill, at quarterback, um, I had no faith in him and he did get banged up as well. Uh, Detroit, Minnesota. This was an all hands on deck game. I said it all week. Get all your fantasy football players in the lineup for this one. Um, now, for Jared Goff, you know, we, we know about Jared Goff's struggles on the road. But I figured, you know what, it's a dome, you know, it, it, climate-controlled dome. He'll be all right. He only threw one touchdown. So five touchdowns at home last week, only one on the road here, even though it was in a dome. Um, but, you know, 30 for 40 for 257, not bad. Uh, the Jameer Gibbs show is fully has been fully on board for a while. And here's the thing, guys. Where are we drafting Jameer Gibbs next year? In PPR. This is a really interesting question because David Montgomery is going to be back next year. All right. And he's going to continue to get a lot of goal line carries. Montgomery was 17 of 55 with a touchdown. Um, you know, I don't think he, he caught two passes for 14 yards, 3.2 a carry. So David Montgomery is, this is what he is. We know that. Um, Jameer Gibbs, 15 for 80 on the ground, 5.3, two touchdowns. He did lose a fumble. Um, and then uh, four for 20 in the passing game as well. So th he's he's right there with Bijan Robinson as the most explosive running back in football. Uh, these two, you know, rookie backs. If David Montgomery was not there, Jameer Gibbs is a top five back in fantasy next year. All right, I think he's going to be back half of the first round, early second. I think Bijan Robinson still will get drafted ahead of him, um, especially if, if Arthur Smith is not there. But been saying it all year the guy is a human highlight reel he is a Tyreek Hill running back that's what Jameer Gibbs is amazing talent Amon Ross St. Brown balled out for me in my work lead 12 for 106 and a score um you know I said about Amon Ross St. Brown at the beginning of the season in order to truly be considered a wide receiver one in fantasy he needed to up the touchdowns out of this you know five to seven range he's got eight now so he's done that you know, he looked like a younger Keenan Allen the first couple of years, the lack of scores, but the boatload of catches. Now he's got the touchdowns up to eight and counting. So he's now there as a top shelf wide receiver one. On the Vikings side, Nick Mullins, uh, man, you know, the, the, he's just, he's a gunslinger. He's a, a classic backup gunslinger that comes in and just hair on fire, throws it all over, no fear. 22 or 36, 411 yards. Like that was impressive, two touchdowns, but he threw four picks. So he was careless with the ball. Um, if you're a Justin Jefferson owner, it was breathtaking some of the catches he made. And he made Mullins look good. Six for 141 and a score. Um, you felt like it could have been even better. Um, you miss, you miss Kirk Cousins. You do. You know, Kirk Cousins and Justin Jefferson was, was a sight to see. Um, uh, you know, Cousins obviously is going to be a free agent. I don't know if he's coming back to Minnesota. You would think they're going to have a conversation there. I feel like that's plateaued, that relationship with the team. Um, but he was good there. TJ Hawkinson, four for 50. This one hurt me in my, in my, in my work league. Four for 58. He got upended on the knee, flipped over, quickly went to the blue tent, and then went to the locker room. I don't have any update as far as what happened yet. Um, KJ Osborne picked up the slack with five for 95 and a score in his place. I guess, uh, KJ Osborne would be somebody I would, I would think about picking up, um, if you needed it. Ty Chandler, eight for 17. 
uh, running the football, 2.1 per carry. So if you put Ty Chandler in there off that huge game last week, wow, that was that was bad. That was really bad. You know, uh, n- nothing to see there. And Jordan Addison, one catch for two yards. So that was that was very disappointing. You, that 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 one hurt. All right, let's get to the Jets Commanders. So the Jets, 30 to 28, wild game. They got up big on this one, uh, 27 to seven. Sam Howell got benched, and Sam Howell, listen. He played really. He played pretty good the first three quarters of the season. Then, the, then his confidence was shot. You can just tell he, there was no confidence over the last couple of games, including the first half of this one. He had to be benched. Uh, Jacoby Brissett comes in there and and goes nuts like he did last week. So just imagine if the Commanders had started Jacoby Brissett from day one, right? Or even the Jets had Jacoby Brissett as a backup for Aaron Rodgers, um, but it didn't happen there. So um, excuse me, sorry about that. Um, so as far as the Jets, the story of the day was Brees Hall. And in my work league, I did, like I said, go went against him 40-plus PPR points. 20 and 95 on the ground, two scores. Uh, 12 for 96 uh, in the passing game. So Brees Hall put forth a wide receiver one game at running back to go with a running back one game. And with Aaron Rodgers coming back next year, I'm going to be very tempted to take Brees Hall in the middle of round one. My, he might even be in that five, six, seven range. He is just a electric talent, just like Jameer Gibbs, just like Bijan Robinson. I think those three guys are going to be all grouped together, and they're all young. Remember, I'm you. You don't take running backs that are older than 27. Even 26 scares me. All right, we've seen this year already. Aaron Jones, Austin Eckler, right? Um, I will be very tempted, and this is the wide res- guy who always tells you to take wide receivers to take Brees Hall next year. Even Garrett Wilson, 9 for 76. <clears throat> you got to think that the Jets are going to have a good backup next year. I will go right back to the well on Garrett Wilson. I had him in my, in my friends and family league. Uh, it's been a struggle, but he's made the most of it. Like Garrett Wilson has played really well despite the conditions. He's going to go over 1,000 yards um, despite the conditions that he's dealing with. Truly awful play. Four quarterbacks on the Jets this season. All right? Um, and as far as the receptions, I mean, you know, he's right now he's at 80, 80 receptions, which, again, is a minor miracle, considering the offensive setup that he's been dealing with. All right. Um, now, I'm recording this live, by the way, guys, Christmas morning at 730. So if I have – if you hear kids – opening the door, telling me it's time, then, you know, anybody who's a parent here understands. I might have to cut this short, and then I'll finish in a little bit. Um, everybody's still sleeping, though, which is a minor miracle. So, again, th- this was this was crazy good. Terry McLaurin was 3-for-50 for the Commanders, and, and they're going to have to draft a quarterback, and they're now moving towards the beginning of the first round. You hear the Bill Belichick rumors. Is it going to happen? I don't know. That's the hot rumor. They're going to have to draft a quarterback. All right, Green Bay Car- over uh, thirty three to thirty over Carolina. If you started the Green Bay defense minus three, how do, how the fuck do you figure this? Carolina doesn't do anything the entire year, and they put off, you know they put up thirty points against the Packers defense. Defenses in fantasy screwed a lot of people this week, including myself with the Bengals. Uh, Bryce Young played well, three hundred twelve yards, two touchdowns. Jordan Love two nineteen in the passing game, two touchdowns. And he ran for one on the ground. So Jordan, listen, the Packers have their quarterback. They have their quarterback, Jordan Love. And and again, you know, they go from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers to Jordan Love, who looks like a player. All right, he's still got some accuracy issues. Um, but he's he's got the it factor. You can just tell watching him. Finally, free Aaron Jones. We got it. 21 for 127. Wow, six yards per game. It just shows you how good this guy is when he's healthy. And he hasn't been healthy all year. One catch for eight yards in a passing game is disappointing. Um, but here's the thing. Like fucking A.J. Dillon. Like seven for 12 and he gets a touchdown. He snipes a touchdown. Jordan Love snipes a touchdown. So it's so frustrating to own Aaron Jones, A, through all the injuries this year, and B, to watch that. A.J. freaking Dillon, again, coming off the bench to snipe a touchdown. All right, nothing really to talk about in the passing game. Uh, Jaden Reed was out. Dontavian Wicks got hurt, 2 for 29 to score before he left the game. Uh, Chuba Hubbard, 16 of 43. He scored, luckily. Um, I didn't like him this week. One catch for eight yards, but, you know, it, the workload is just there. 
Adam Thielen, six for 94. All right, uh, next, moving right along here. Uh, Cle Cleveland 36, Houston 22. All right, this is bordering on absurd now with Joe Flacco. Um, this is one of the this is one of the great stories of the season. It really is. Like again, you know, we throw we use the cliche a lot right off the couch. He literally was right off the couch and is is leading this team to the playoffs. You can't not but you can't not root for the guy. He's a good guy, right? Twenty seven of forty two, three sixty eight, three touchdowns. He did th uh, throw two picks, but man, and how and and if you are an Amari Cooper owner. Congratulations on making the finals. 11 for 265 and two touchdowns. Amari Cooper, who people, you know, forget, forget about because he's getting a little up there in age. He's been kind of inconsistent from week to week. Like, this was incredible. And here's the thing. It goes to show you that the luck factor in fantasy. In my in my friends and family league, which I have a 60-something 60, 60 percent chance of winning, My I told you guys about how my pops upset uh, a league member at the last minute to to knock him out and um, change the dynamics of this round of, of as far as who we faced. The guy my dad knocked out, I would have played this week. He had Amari Cooper. He also had Puka Nukua. I would have been blown to smithereens. All right? And and not had no chance to get to the final. Right now I have a you know 60% chance to get there because I avoided this guy. Unbelievable. Jerome Ford, only 15 for 25 on the ground. He did score, though. Um, crazy stuff. One catch for minus two yards. Dalton Schultz, 8 for 61 in the passing game. Davis Mills, Case Keenum, you know, both were in there. Mills threw two touchdowns. Um, Nico Collins, 4 for 18, but he scored. So, like, luckily for him, that saved his day. Devin Singletary, 9 for 44 on the ground. Nothing happening there for the Houston Texans. And it's a shame because the Texans really had a nice... Uh, thing going there with C.J. Stroud before the concussion. Um, just an awful ending to their season. All right, Tampa Bay, 30-12. to 12. This is another major story this season. Um, Todd Bowles is coaching well. This is a guy as a coach who's been made, you know, has been criticized a lot in the past. Baker Mayfield, who's absolutely been destroyed, and deservedly so, for his journeyman career after being the number one overall pick. Baker Mayfield is playing as well as any quarterback in the NFL. 26-35, 283, two touchdowns. Like, they're going to have to re-sign him. Like, it was originally thought that he was going to be a stopgap. They have to bring him back. Mike Evans, 7 for 86, two more touchdowns. Like, the, all he does is catch touchdowns, and he's a free agent. Do they bring him back? Now, Mike Evans, you know, he's 30 years old. It's a little, a little scary, the age. Does he go to the Jets with Aaron Rodgers? Hall of Fame, first ballot Hall of Famer. This guy is unbelievable, and he's durable. Rashad White, 20 of 39. Like, this is the Rashad White show, right? Um, touches galore. Awful on the ground. But he scored. 6 for 38 through the air. So, another example like Kyra Williams. You don't have to be flashy. But if the touches are there, you, you, you have to target these guys in fantasy. Trevor Lawrence, 17 of 29. 211, a touchdown, two picks. It's getting really painful to watch Trevor. Like, he's hurt. Concussion, shoulder. He left early. Like... I get that the Jaguars are trying to save a sinking season, and you could classify them with the Houston Texans as well. Both of these teams were on the up and up, and then injury struck, and everything fell apart. Um, they're gonna have to sit, they have to sit him down next week. Like you're putting him in harm's way now. Um, he's he can't move with the ankle injury. He's got a shoulder problem now, concussion. Like you got to sit him down. And C.J. Beathard moved the ball. And Calvin Ridley, 6 for 90, two touchdowns. We waited for this all year. Like, Calvin Ridley is still really good. He just never got that consistency going this season. And I went against him in my friends and family league, and it was so annoying because he was collecting garbage time. Uh, there's nothing worse in fantasy when you have a matchup in hand and you're doing really well and you got a nice lead, and then the, the garbage time shit happens and it just eats into your, into your lead. And Evan Ingram in my other league, my opponent had, he went 10 for 95, lost a fumble, but still. Talk to you guys about Travis Etienne. He's been on fumes for over a month. Six for 12 on the ground. Just awful finish for him. Three for 19. He's He he just, he doesn't have the juice anymore in his legs. He's never been this healthy before for an entire season. And we're seeing, we're seeing why. We're seeing the results, I should say. 
Chicago 27, uh, Arizona 16. Listen, the Bears have a decision to make. Justin Fields is playing his best football of the season right now. He's playing the way he did in the middle of last season. 15 to 27, 170 yards and a touchdown and a pick. Ran for 97 yards and another score. Cole Komet, four for 107 before he gets hurt. DJ Moore, only three for 18. So uh, that was a little rough to see there. But Khalil Herbert, and you, we, it, it's been a riddle figuring out the Chicago backfield the entire season. 20 for 112 and a score. Um, you know, it, it, nobody used any of these guys at this point. All right, Kyla Murray, 24-38, two passing touchdowns. He ran for 32 yards. So what are they going to do there? A lot of quarterback questions this offseason. James Conner, I benched James Conner because I just didn't like this matchup. 12 for 45. He wasn't great on the ground, but 5 for 67 in the passing game and a score. He was doing virtually nothing in the passing game all season. He was a catch and fall down guy almost every time. Three catches, three yards, two catches, two yards, and then he does this. And that just that pissed me off. Uh, that, but clearly it wasn't the right move. Trey McBride, uh, a rare quiet game for him, 6 for 31. Um, all right, who do, what do we got next here? All right. Uh, sorry, my computer's a little slow. Miami, 22 to 20 over Dallas. This was another frustrating game for me. You know, Jake Ferguson, I put him in twice this season, once on Thanksgiving and then uh, for this game, and it just didn't work out. You know, there's a lot of mouths to feed in this Dallas offense, but uh, we got the bad Tony Pollard situation again today, 12 for 38 uh, on the ground, um, one catch for five yards. Like, I, I don't understand what they're doing with this guy. Like, Ezekiel Elliott is playing better than him right now. CeeDee Lamb, 6 for 118 in the score. Uh, Jake Ferguson, 4 for 45. It was a workmanlike effort for Ferguson, but not great. Dak Prescott, two passing scores. Um you know, he did lose a fumble. Dallas is not, does not play well on the road. They haven't played well on the road road all season. It's been a struggle. Tua Tagovailoa, another listless performance for him, just one passing touchdown. This is the this is the deal. When you have a quarterback in your fantasy team that doesn't run like Tagovailoa, you need two t- passing touchdowns bare minimum to make it a good outing. Raheem Mostert, 11 of 46. Devin Achan, 7 of 24. Neither guy distinguished themselves. So Devin Acham, I said when he came back to sell high, multiple times I said it. There was no that touchdown, scoring a touchdown once every six touches, that was never going to sustain itself. And that was a perfect opportunity to trade him. Tyreek Hill back with nine for 99. Jalen Waddle got beat up, one one catch of 50 yards. He went out early. Multiple injuries. He got poked in the eye. Show, like I believe it was either his ankle or his shoulder. Couldn't stay healthy in this one. And finally. New England 26, Denver 23. The Patriots are starting to win with Bailey Zappi. Not going to change anything. He's not the answer of quarterback, but they win this one. And I put Ezekiel Elliott in there. I told you to do it. Denver gave up the most, has given up the most fantasy points to running backs this season. 12 for 27 on the ground, not great, but 9 for 33 in a passing game and a score. Uh, 20 fantasy, I believe it was 21 fantasy points. For the Broncos, um, Quentin Sutton got hurt. Javante Williams, 11 of 24. Like, Javante Williams right now is A.J. Dillon. He did score, but lost a fumble. Um, I hate to say it, three catches for minus five yards. He's A.J. Dillon now. It's a shame because this is one of the most exciting guys in fantasy uh, before he got hurt, and now this is what he is. All right, guys, so that's the podcast for today. Hit that subscribe button. Also, become a member. Think about becoming a member. Hit that join button. Check out the three different levels of membership on the channel. Um, You know, uh, you'll get a free draft guide, I believe, for the gold membership. Uh, So check that out. And, uh, you know, good luck the rest of the way today. I don't know if I'm going to be able to stomach watching this Chiefs game um, because my, you know, I have both my leagues. My opponents are loaded with Chiefs players. So I might just have to avoid that. You know, when it gets to this point, I can't drive myself crazy watching it. So, um, but good luck today, guys. I appreciate it. Happy holidays. Enjoy this uh, day and uh, we will chat soon.